Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to a brand new video. So as you guys have noticed, I have been gone for a little over a month actually. By the time this video comes out, I have filmed this video multiple times and it's been hard for me to be okay with uploading it. I'm looking off screen because I'm nervous. I'm nervous to talk about this. I have never really opened up with you guys as much as a lot of other content creators have. And I think that really stems from my childhood and just internalizing a lot of traumas and things that have happened in my life. And you know, I'm not from America, I'm not American. You know, my entire family and my heritage and my parents and like my entire life is from Europe. I was raised a little differently and I internalized a lot of things. I internalized a lot of hurt, a lot of sadness, a lot of pain that I experienced as a kid. You know, I wasn't really taught to express myself and express my feelings, especially by my father. I was taught to, you know, get over things and be a man about it and all those weird, just old school mentality. And that's not to blame my parents. It's, you know, how, probably how they were raised. But today things are so much more open and welcoming and just different. And I think the topic of mental health is extremely important. However, when it comes to depression, anxiety, self-harm, and just really mental health in general, there is such a stigma still about it, especially on the internet and YouTube. First and foremost, I want to make this video to help lessen that stigma. And also I want you guys to know that this is not a video to come off as relatable or use depression and anxiety as a crutch or in a comedic way, like how a lot of people do on Twitter, you know? This is real, this is my life. This is something that I've been dealing with for the past 10 years of my life since I was like 17, 18. There's no intro, there's no, you know, snazzy editing in this video. It's just me and you talking on camera, being real and raw and realistic and just opening up to you guys because that's what I wanna do from now on. I'm trying harder to lower my walls and not come off as such a perfectionist and somebody who's like obsessive compulsive in the image that they're putting out online because I don't think that's realistic and that's not who my authentic self is. You know, I, as much as a charming, goofy, like funny person I am, I hold a lot back. And I think it's because I'm scared and I don't wanna be scared anymore. And I hope that this video can help one of you guys out there who may be dealing with the same thing. And I'm nervous as hell to talk about it. For the past 10 years of my life, I have been dealing with depression and anxiety on a, not just a surface level. A lot of you guys don't know, but I've been on my own since I was around 16 and a half, 17. I come from a very religious Eastern European family. My father and I don't have a relationship. We never really have. And when I came out as gay, it was not approved and I just did not feel safe and I didn't feel welcome. And so I left and I moved in with my brother. And then luckily enough, I was on a scholarship and immediately went into school after a few flubs with other ideas. So yeah, I've just been on my own since then for almost over 10 years now. And I haven't been back home since. But when I got to college, I had a really hard time. I had a hard time adjusting. I didn't have a support system. I was lost. And I started having feelings of self-harm and suicide. And I was just in a really dark place for my first semester of college. I'm sorry, I'm gonna be emotional because I'm, I'm just like, I haven't been emotional in a long time. I was just scared. I was alone. I was new in my sexuality and who I was as a gay man as a gay boy and I just didn't have anyone. I had, you know, I had, of course had friends, but I'm the type of person I don't like to throw all my problems on someone. So I internalize it and it builds up and it builds up and it builds up and over years and years and years, I got to a point in the past three years that I just couldn't deal anymore. So during college was my first, actually a little bit before college was my first time experimenting with medication. You know, I went to my campus counselor, they put me on a medication through the health situation, the medic, medical clinic on campus. And at the time, they just put me on a random medication. And since then, I have been on so many different medications. And it's something I've never t spoken about because it was looked down on five, 10 years ago. And even today it can be, which it shouldn't because this is not something that I chose to do. This is a chemical imbalance in my body. You know, I went through a lot of shit and a lot of hard times more than your average person who has like a loving supportive family and that's okay but i just didn't have the support system i didn't have anybody to talk to i didn't have a therapist at the time all i had was the medic on campus so i was put on a medication and from that moment on my personality changed i became very 
I don't know how to explain it, but almost robotic. I feel like I was on cruise control for a very long time and I just kept internalizing things. You know, I may have not been depressed, but I was not myself. I realized like I had become a person that I didn't like. And over the past year in general, post breakup, I realized that I needed to start putting myself first. I think the breakup was a catalyst for me. It was, especially with pandemic and COVID and everything, I finally had the time to really focus on just myself instead of focusing on a partner, a relationship, a home, a relationship with my mom who also lived with us, the dogs, touring, production, shows, all these amazing things that I had been fulfilled with in my life, but I forgot about who I was and I forgot about putting myself first. So over the past year, I started working out more. I started eating better, not that I wasn't, but I kicked it into high gear. And what was most important was seeing a therapist and discussing the medications that I was on. And from the start, after a lot of talking, a lot of opening up, a lot of trauma, a lot of healing, it came to be that I was misdiagnosed and I was on a lot of the wrong medications. And about six months ago, I stopped cold turkey with the help of my psychiatrist and my therapist and my doctors. I can't stress this enough, do not do this by yourself. Do not do this without supervision. Talk to your parents, talk to a friend, talk to a therapist, talk to a guidance counselor. It is not safe to do this alone. And I was able to do this under supervision and it all happened because of my breakup. You know, I was at the lowest point in my life and I'm like, I can't get any lower than this. If I do, I will be dead. And it just sucks that it took that. It took that realization that I don't want to be here anymore to really put myself first. I was always raised to put others first and be there unconditionally for people. And that's what it took because I wasn't letting anybody in anymore. I wasn't communicating with my partner. Again, this is nobody's fault, but my own. It's not even a fault. It's just like a part of life. Anyways, I was just in a really dark place. And I'm so happy that I'm here right now to talk to you guys about this because I just never want to be in that place ever again. Um, anyways, I'm getting off track here, but over the past six months, I went cold turkey off of medic, not cold turkey. The way they do it, they're weaning you off of medication. So you take a lower dosage, you're splitting your dosage, you're going lower and lower and lower over the course of a few months. That took about three months. And over the past, the recent three months, I have become the happiest version of myself that I have ever known. And I do things that make me happy. Like I'm able to go outside and feel the sunlight on my skin and hear the birds chirping and be happy. And this is all new to me again because nothing made me happy. I was angry for a long time. I would go through like a lot of ups and downs, especially like I would miss a dosage and I would feel a lot better. And I'm like, oh, this isn't right. I need to be back on my medication, especially while traveling. And then I would go back on and I'm like, this medication is turning me into a zombie. I was nervous. I was picking at my hands. I was picking at my lips. Like I just had like no personality. And especially on camera, I had to really, really turn it on. My brain got really foggy. I couldn't think. I was always looking in the mirror and like I was obsessing over how I would look. Like I needed to be more than perfect. And there would sometimes I'd film videos and I would never put them out. I have like maybe like 40 videos that I've never released because I wasn't happy. And now being on the right medication has opened my life up so much and so many doors are opening and I'm able to like heal and nurture my soul and do things that really make me happy. And I'm writing again and I'm creating content. I have so much, so many videos that I, I'm excited to do and excited to put out. And for the first time in my life, I'm just excited. I'm excited. I'm not angry at anyone. I'm not blaming anyone. You know, I'm looking forward to the future, whereas a year ago I wasn't. I was scared, I was in a dark place, and I was alone, even though I was surrounded by so many people and I had so many people out there that cared about me. I just like always felt very alone. You know, I'm not, I'm grateful for where I am and the opportunities that I have and the things that I do, but it is a very isolating world to be here to just have this camera on me. It's not what I'm used to. I'm used to being on set. I'm used to being around a lot of people. And this pandemic really shook me. And my breakup really shook me because I realized like I had nobody to care for anymore. Then that fulfilled me caring about people and being there for people and being there for my friends. That is what fulfilled me always. But I can do all that. And I realized I didn't have anybody who cared about me because I was pushing everybody away. 
because I just didn't want to be hurt and I didn't want people to judge me or think less of me because I was on a medication or, you know, whatever, whatever the thought process was. But I wanted to make this video my return video, if you will. Don't call it a comeback to show you guys this part of me and what I've been dealing with for the past year. And if you can relate, I love you so much and know that you're not alone. You're not. There are so many people that care for you and it's okay to let people in because this is what matters. This is what life is all about, caring about other people and helping other people. But you have to also help yourself. You can't just focus your 100% attention on somebody else and the other people around you. It's like burning a candle at both ends and I was doing, I've been doing that my entire life because I'm afraid I was afraid of losing people and people judging me and thinking less of me and, and not having the same opportunities as my friend. I was constantly comparing myself to others. Why don't I have this? Why don't I have that? I'm so talented, I'm so this, I'm so that. I have so much potential, but why am I not having the same opportunities when I work just as hard as this person? I wish I could have done this eight years ago, nine years ago, 10 years ago when I was 17, 18, when I was just an innocent person, just like out in the world without anybody watching my back. I was working three jobs. I was putting myself through school. I was running to New York every weekend for internships and opportunities and jobs and acting gigs and all this stuff, but I didn't. And this was a life lesson for me that I'm sharing with you guys. So hopefully you don't have to do that. Reach out to somebody, talk to a friend talk to a therapist. There are people out there that care about you. There are resources, which I will link down below in the description and the AdSense of this video. I'm gonna look up some organizations that help with mental health. I know there's a lot of apps. I'm gonna link everything down below. I will be donating the AdSense from this video to those organizations. And if you guys know of any, please comment them down below. But let's start a discussion in the comments. Let's, let's talk. I wanna know how you guys are feeling, what you guys are going through. I know pandemic affects everybody very, very differently. For me, it has, of course, but I'm really lucky to come out on the other side. And I know that there's so many people who don't and so many people who stay in that darkness and stay lost, but mental health is so important. And I'm here to tell you that it is not a sign of weakness. It is a sign of strength to ask for help. It's a sign of bravery. It's a sign of being strong. And it is so important. You know, if you're unhappy with the outside, you cannot work on that until the inside, until your heart feels complete and your soul and you feel happy. God, this has been so uncomfortable to talk about. But thank you guys for being here. Thank you for not judging me. And if you are judging me, whatever. I've been on the internet enough. <laughs> I was in a very public relationship for over six years. I can take it, but I'm not scared anymore. I'm so excited for what the future is gonna throw my way. And I'm excited to put myself out there again, making friends, forming connections, being my best self, taking care of myself. Even though I was very active before, you guys know I live a very active and healthy lifestyle. It was just, I was giving myself 20% and I was giving other people 80%. You can't do that. It's not selfish to put yourself first. It's not. It's a crazy world out there. You gotta put yourself first and then worry about other people. You, you can do it simultaneously, but always put yourself first. I am not gonna cry anymore. I'm done. Actually, no, I didn't wanna talk about that. Like, I haven't cried for a very, very long time. It's weird to be emotional. It's weird to watch a movie, for me, now. It's weird for me to watch a movie and to cry when people are crying, to feel what other people are feeling through a screen, to go outside and like really just like feel euphoric because of, it's a beautiful day or you're driving in your car and your favorite song comes on and you just go like living your best life. It's weird for me to feel those emotions and I was, it's all new to me again. And I'm really thankful because a bitch is emotional, clearly. I can write now and I can cry. I can look at something beautiful and cry. I can watch a sad movie and I can cry and I couldn't do that before. It's really a slippery slope if you're on the wrong medications and I was for a very long time and I'm grateful for the team that I have around me that I've, you know, me reaching out for help. Nobody, nobody's reaching out to me and say, hey, are you okay? And I miss having that. And I have my friends, of course, my dear friends back on the East Coast. I don't have a ton of friends in LA. I have maybe like three, four friends here. I know on the outside it may look like I have a ton of friends and, you know, millions of followers and subscribers and whatever, but I don't, I don't but I'm excited to build that life that I want with good, unconditional people that are there for me. And I'm also excited to let 
that love in and accept that love because I haven't for a long time. Who knows, maybe that was a, you know, it was an issue in my last relationship. I was always there for that person and I wouldn't ever let them be there for me. And I've learned that lesson now and I know that I'm not gonna make that mistake again. And it's hard, it's hard for me to be vulnerable and be open and let these walls down. But again, that's what life is about. It's about forming these connections and being real. I'm done like putting out this perfect picture of me I'm done, I'm just done painting the picture that I'm okay all the time when I wasn't. I feel like I'm okay now, but I'm excited to be open and honest with you guys moving forward about so much more. Of course, like I'm never gonna share my entire life because that's not me. Like you're not gonna see me Snapchatting or, you know, storing every single thing because I do like to keep a lot private, especially when it comes to like personal relationships and dating, you know, whenever that comes in my life. But yeah, I'm rambling now. I'm excited, I'm happy for the first time in so, so long. I've done a lot of growing, a lot of healing, and I have so much more to do. And I'm so excited to discover who I am. I'm excited for you guys to see who I am even more and for us to build a community here that's based on honesty, vulnerability, and fun. And just having fun, having a good time, and I'm excited for everything to come. And I'm thankful for you guys for watching this entire video through. Again, I love you so much. You're not alone. I know everybody says that, but I promise you you're not. There's gonna be a lot of helpful links down below. I will see you tomorrow. There's a brand new series launching on my channel with a very, very special guest that I think you guys are gonna be so excited about. Okay, Sassy Dano, come back. Okay, girl, she's back and I'm better than ever. And I'm excited. I will see you tomorrow at 11 a.m. PST with a brand new series launching on my channel right here. So have your notifications on, like this video, drop a comment down below, share your story. I will be responding. You guys know I respond. And if you're not already, follow me over on Instagram and TikTok, being more active on both platforms right now. And DM me if you ever have a question, like I respond to DMs. You know, I'm not afraid of that. <laughs> don't be crazy though. Occur, occur. Thank you. All right, I love you so much. I still don't have an outro, so this is the outro. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.